I'm so excited to be here, and especially in Providence, which, as Saul was saying, is my new home. Um, I've been here for a week, and I just started my freshman year at Brown. So very excited to be here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so very exciting week. Um, so today, I'm going to be talking about menstruation, or more specifically, the intersection of menstruation and technology, and how that intersection opened my eyes to the joy and power of coding. So I'm going to backtrack to, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to backtrack to about a year and two months ago, which was July 2014. Uh, I was 16, and I had just finished my junior year of high school. I really liked photography, I liked writing, and I liked hanging out with my friends. And I was also very shy and not one to speak up, which meant that I never raised my hand in class and I shook before class presentations. That summer, I was participating in an intensive program to learn how to code with Girls Who Code, which is an organization trying to close the gender gap in tech by getting more girls coding. Uh, actually, in a room of 25 engineers, statistically, only three are women. So it's actually a huge problem in the industry. Uh, my mom had encouraged me to apply to this program because she knew that I liked math, and she knew that I liked being creative, and she saw coding as the intersection of the two. Uh, great. So for seven weeks, I sat around a table with 19 other girls of varied backgrounds learning how to code. We got frustrated together when uh, our programs wouldn't generate blocks of different heights. Uh, we cheered for each other when our fish swam across the screen or our slot machines finally worked. Uh, every day, I got up in front of them and I presented my code, even when it didn't work, even when I had failed. I learned from them that even when I don't look like anyone else in the room, I can still connect and make great friends. I learned from them to be confident. I learned from them the importance of girl power, of girls and women coming together to share, to collaborate, and to speak up. And I learned from them not to fear failing, to actually see failing as something to learn from. So at the end of the summer, we were told to make a final project, anything from scratch. So I teamed up with a girl named Andy. This is us sitting together in the program. Um, and she wanted to make a game about the hypersexualization of women in gaming. But I had an idea for a different game, a game about menstruation. I don't know why I had menstruation on my mind. You know, maybe I had my period. Maybe it was all the female power in the room. I mean, who knows? <laughs> but it just kind of popped into my head. And I was hesitant to say it at first. Uh, part of me was like, would this girl who I just met a few weeks ago think I was some weirdo for wanting to make a game about menstruation? Uh, and the other part of me was also hesitant because I was kind of uncomfortable about my own period. But I had learned that summer to really love my feminine side and also to speak up even when what I wanted to say was unconventional or controversial. So I found the words falling out of my mouth. What if we made a game where a girl throws tampons? We laughed a little bit, and I mean, the idea was funny. But then I asked, why is it so strange to put tampons in a game, but not a gun? Why would it be so strange to see menstrual blood in a game when it's so commonplace to see blood spurting from a chopped off limb? Why is menstruation so taboo? Andy and I started to talk, and we realized that we had experienced the menstrual taboo firsthand. The first time I got my period, I was too embarrassed to go to the store and buy myself my own tampons. I didn't want to look the cashier in the eye, and I didn't want anyone to see me with the box on my way home. So I forced my mom to do it for me. But the first, uh, the first time I actually did go to the store and buy myself my own tampons, I was terrified. <laughs> this is a bit of a reenactment, but it was, it was like that. Um, <laughs> Uh, I talked to Andy, and she had shared similar experiences, and we wondered whether we were just weirdly sensitive about our periods, or was this a prevalent problem? And we talked to our girlfriends, and they also echoed these same experiences. And actually, my girlfriends reminded me that whenever we talked about our period in front of our guy friends, they would become disgusted and either walk away or just say, ew, you know, that, that's gross. We did some more research. Uh, or actually, uh, while talking with our girlfriends, we realized that uh, we had been conditioned to become ashamed of our periods. 
So we did some more research and we realized that the menstrual taboo we were experiencing was actually a part of a much larger and more serious global problem. In India, 23% of girls drop out of school when they reach puberty. And often that's because they don't have the resources to take care of their period or they're just too embarrassed to do that at school. In some towns in Nepal, women are forced to live in unsafe and dirty shacks while they menstruate because they're seen as unclean. After doing this research, Andy and I were sure of what we wanted to do for our final project. We wanted to make a game to combat the menstrual taboo and create thought and discussion around it, and through that, help break it down. But not everyone was as sure as we were. When we told the idea to our TA, she said, do you really want to do that? And although our teacher was supportive, he felt that the idea was so controversial that he should check with the higher-ups at Girls Who Code. They were also very supportive and you know, said go for it. So with approval on hand, we started making this game. We started with a blank white screen, and then there were a few colored blocks. And then those colored blocks became animated people, and then they were throwing tampons, and they were running, and little by little, this game started to come together. <laughs> and it was hugely empowering because everything happening on screen was because of code Andy or I had written. And it was, it was incredible to realize that I had the power to make what was only an idea a few days before into a reality. Coding the game wasn't always so fun, though, or so easy, and at times it was actually incredibly frustrating. Uh, like when I decided that I wanted to make the girl in the game jump. I thought it was just gonna take me a few hours, uh, and I tried over and over again, and she wouldn't go up and she wouldn't go back down. And after you know, six hours of trying to do this, I left Girls Who Code very unhappy, very disheartened. Um, I remember riding my bike home, and then something clicked. And I got off my bike, and I pulled out my notebook, and I started scribbling down code, and I realized I had been thinking about it all wrong. All I needed was a few conditionals and a variable. And when I came in the next morning and I actually got her to jump, I felt so good about myself. Uh, and these are the 10 or so lines of code that actually make the girl in the game jump. And it's funny that just 10 lines of code can make you feel so triumphant. Uh, <laughs> so by the end of the summer, I had learned some coding basics. I had become more confident through coding, which had allowed the one shy Sophie, the girl who was kind of uncomfortable about her period, to create a full working game about menstruation, which we called Tampon Run. Uh, <laughs> so, this, it, it had been a great journey, and if this had been the end of my journey, then that would have been wonderful. But this was only the beginning. So the night before the first day uh, of my senior year of high school, Annie and I posted the game to a very rudimentary website. And actually, can we play the video clip? I'm gonna show you what the game looked like. Okay, there we go. So this is how it begins. Uh, so can we pause it here? Most women menstruate for a large portion of their lives. It is by all means normal. So we had this preamble that went with it. Okay, we we'll press play now. Uh, we're gonna go through the preamble. Okay, pause it. Yeah, most people, women and men alike, feel uncomfortable talking about anything having to do with menstruation. The taboo that surrounds it teaches women that a normal and natural bodily function is embarrassing and crude. Okay, we can keep going. <laughs> Sorry, it's gonna get a little tedious with the pausing. Um, okay, pause it here. Tampon run is a way <laughs> of discussing the taboo in an accessible way. Instead of holding a gun, the runner holds tampons. And instead of shooting enemies, the runner throws tampons at them. Okay. Um, all right, let's pause it here. Although the concept of the video game may be strange, it's stranger that our society has accepted and normalized guns and violence through video games, yet we still find tampons and menstruation unspeakable. <laughs> okay, let's pause it here. <laughs> Hopefully one day menstruation will be as normal, if not more so, than guns and violence have become in our society. Normal enough to place in a video game without a second thought. <laughs> uh, and then we had an ins like two instruction slides, uh, this one, <laughs> and then... <laughs> We had this one too, little feel. And then um, this is a short demo of the game. I just took a video of me playing it. Um, so, you know, you shoot your tampons at the people coming, jump for a tampon box, 
reload your ammo. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so anyways, we posted this game to this very rudimentary website, and I went to school the next day, very normal day, I went to classes, I had hellos in the hallway with people I hadn't seen all summer, and then after school I hung out at a friend's house. Uh, but at around five, I got a very excited call from my mom. Where are you, she said, you're trending. <laughs> <laughs> I raced home, I called Andy, I was excited but also very confused. Um, and as it turned out, a British journalist had found the game, i still not really sure how, and had written an article about it. And media outlets around the world had picked up our story. And this is just a sample of a few of the outlets that <laughs> featured us. Um, so the next few weeks were craziness. In between classes, during my lunch periods, after school, I was on the phone answering questions from press. In October, a Silicon Valley gaming company flew Andy and I out for a, uh, hack -a, a gaming hackathon uh, sponsored by Stanford alums. Uh, here's a picture of Andy who fell asleep briefly in the middle of the night under a table. Uh, <laughs> so we had a lot of fun. Um, and we got to speak on the podium with the then CEO of Twitter, DeCostello, as well as many other speaking engagements. Actually, one of the most memorable is when I got up on stage and then forgot all of my lines, uh, momentarily freaked out, and then was able to ad lib and make it out alive to my surprise. So that was a great learning experience. Uh, when we decided that we wanted to make a mobile app of the game, a leading agile development firm, Pivotal Labs, worked with us pro bono to create a mobile app. And here's Andy uh, pairing with one of the developers on our team. We went every day after school. Uh, we won a Webby and a Tribeca Disruptive Innovators Award. Uh, we signed with book agents to create a children's book to get more kids excited about coding. And most recently, a Hollywood director is creating a short bio a biopic about the making of Tampon Run, uh, <laughs> funded by a, a leading uh, tech company, which is actually shooting this week in LA. So uh, really, a lot of craziness. Um, but much greater than all of the press and all of um, all these opportunities has been the incredible feedback that we've gotten from our users. We had girls and women emailing us and tweeting us, telling us that playing Tampon Run had made them feel more comfortable with their period. We actually had one girl tell us that she once leaked period blood into her all-white pants while her crush looked on, and then he never spoke to her again. And she said that playing tampon run had finally made her feel more comfortable with her period. Uh, we had a teacher reach out to us to say that all the eighth grade boys and girls were playing tampon run during recess. <laughs> uh, and when one fifth grade girl called the game weird, an eighth grade boy told her that tampons weren't weird. Even I was becoming more comfortable with my period. I mean, how could I not? I was spending hours every day talking with reporters about my period. <laughs> with my teachers about my period, uh, even my guy friends who had come around because of Tampon Run. Andy and I were accomplishing what we had set out to do but thought, you know, never thought would actually happen. We were creating thought and discussion about the menstrual taboo and through that helping to break it down. But we got another type of feedback as well which was equally as inspiring. Girls and women were reaching out to us to say that playing Tampon Run and hearing our story had inspired them to learn how to code. And that was hugely fulfilling because learning to code had been so empowering for me and also because of the huge gender disparity in the field. No boy would have made tampon run. <laughs> uh, <laughs> women bring their own unique perspective to things. So imagine all the fun apps, all the groundbreaking tools and innovative solutions to problems we would have if there are more women in tech. I've actually learned through this, this experience the incredible importance of girl power. Uh, I never would have made the game in a co-ed environment, and I never would have been able to get through this year without my wonderful co-creator, Andy. It's really just been so incredible sharing this year with her. Uh, and then I also learned a few other really important personal lessons through this whole journey. I've learned to have the courage to speak up even when what I want to say is controversial or unconventional. I've learned to use humor to reach a wide audience and not be preachy. 
and I've learned to overcome my fears about public speaking uh, <laughs> and actually kind of enjoy it. Uh, but the most important lesson that I've learned from this whole tampon run experience is the power of technology to create social change. Tampon Run was, uh, you guys saw it, it's a simple game, um, and I thought it would just reach 20 people, but it ended up being able to reach millions globally and you know, became much more than just a game. Uh, so I've, I've learned through this experience that with my life, I want to be at this intersection of tech and social good, and although I'm not sure exactly what that will look like, I'm excited to spend the next four years at Brown learning, opening my eyes further, and exploring what that might be. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you.